which is at only a bending scale, which is 10 minus 2 is 8. <coughs> and less than 10 are d minus 2 and bending scales, but these extra scales needed for the automata are counted twice like 10 minus d. And it doesn't have to 8. So I have twice many extra scales and minus this local automata, but to get the right counting, I have to get rid of half of them, and that you can do because on a two dimensional load volume, you can impose a self duality condition on these extra scales, and then you get them to do the right counting, and that's it. 8 and the 8 minus it fits into a super symmetric multiple, so that you have in super symmetric loading, and we talk about the super symmetric plane. Now, effectively, it amounts to folly that uh, if you take out a string in 10 dimensions, then you might say it behaves effectively as an object, that if you wrap it, it gives two zero planes, and that's because of the extra input of the PP ray, and if you keep unwrapping it, it remains the string. It's, it's the undoubt, it remains the string. And if you apply this simple wrapping rule, together with the initial condition that to A and to B have only one fundamental string, you exactly build up this t value representation a vector of zero planes and a single fundamental string. Because if you unwrap, that means you go here horizontally, you remain a single fundamental string, but each time you wrap, you go work tightly, then this one goes to two, and together with this two, it goes to four, and exactly the other one is these numbers are exactly the vector of the state. You have all follows from this effective wrapping rule. Okay, these were fundamental brains. Let's now go to the deep brains. They go slightly different. They organize themselves in different representations of the T-Belt, namely as Karel Spino representations of the T-Belt. And there, but there are very little terms as a common fundamental string that you see, in 10 dimensions, the decimal term is just the uh, this, uh, first term and the last term. Forget about the net term. And that's the value of the decimal term for two planes. This F2 is the curvature of the Boyle vector. This signals the fact that the fundamental string then is the deep plane. And C is the thermal sum of all the normal potentials. But again, in low dimensions, the, 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 the fundamental string, the net term, the next, the, the, these terms are not gated there. You have to add these extra low point scalars. You have to include this extra red term, and only that combination is case invariant. And I use here kind of a short application because in low dimensions, the Ramon Ramon potentials themselves are spin representations. So this unified expression works so nicely because I only deal with a, a little bit of representation of the T-belt, namely fundamental strings, a vector of zero things, and spin of the T-belt. And the Ramon Ramon potential also spin of the gamma matrix is the gamma matrix of the T-belt group. But again, the, I, I can make a gate to that new term. I have to introduce that scalar, but that causes a problem with counting the degrees of freedom. Because in 10 dimensions, I have a vector, it's a count of speed minus 1 for a DP plane. I have a number of embedded scalars, it's a dot to 8 for every DFSP plane. But in less than 10 dimensions, I have a vector, I have embedded scalars, but I have found twice too many extra scalars, so it doesn't have dot to 8. And now, I can't impose self reality because the DFSP plane is not necessarily a two dimensional low problem. But happily enough, the formula itself comes to our help because you see, this is a deceivingly simple formula, but of course it really is the decimal term for a whole spin representation of d -brains. And all you have to require is that if you take a single component of that spin that 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 only contains half of these extra scalars. And if you have used out the special properties of the gamma matrices of the t value group, it turns out that indeed, if you go to the specific spin component, only half of this combination really uh, adds, uh, contributes to these, these extra scales. And really, uh, it works, you only have half extra scales without the need to impose any uh, self belt So that's nice. So, and now I want to, uh, and that's, uh, again, the whole organization of deep brains into t value the same way you by a simple rapid rule. Now, it's simply, if you take a deep brain with rapid, it gives you deep brain a single one. If you unwrap it, the results gives you a simple deep brain. In other words, deep brains don't need base or gravitational suits that exist upon themselves. And if you then start with the initial condition that the 2A has only deep brains uh, with P even, and the 2B has deep brains with P odd, you apply this, this rapid rule. You exactly build up, so you, you now if you go both horizontally and diagonally, you get just one. Uh, you build up these numbers, and these are exactly the numbers corresponding to a spin representation of TL, exactly the number of components. So the deep brains don't need gravitational solutions. But now comes the point of my talk. I now want to extend my analysis to solid forms. As the deep brains go with inverse state protocols, and solid forms go with inverse square state protocols. How do they go? First, I consider the standard solid forms, and that has a mean solid forms which are asymptotically flat. They have uh, more than two transverse directions. 
Then, again, there's a number going on in the sense that if you compactify, then for any compactified reaction, you get two serotonin minus four brains from a coming from unlapped serotonin, and it comes from unlapped serotonin brain, and now there's an extra thing from the good climb on the ball. That's in some sense the dual of the day. In some sense, the serotons are the electron and the tools of the fundamental brains. And in the same way, as for the fundamental brains, there was an extra double to the P wave, here there's an extra double to the good climb on the ball. And so if you want to have for every fundamental brain, an electric duality uh, sort of brain, then you need to sort of the dual wrapping group. So this is slightly different from the fundamental brains in the sense that now upon wrapping it remains undoubled, and under, if you unwrap it, it's doubled. Because of this excess of supply on the pole. So it's a, it's a dual wrapping group. And if you do that, and now the initial condition is that you start with a single sorotonic in the first first five brain dimension, you keep this uh, uh, dual wrapping group, you exactly build up here a singlet of uh, d minus 4 brains and uh, d minus 5 brains and the vector representation of d minus 4 brains. This is exactly the dual statement of having a simplex string and a vector of fundamental zero brains. So this is just the dual statement of having some fundamental brains. So far so good. But now comes the new input. Because if you now look to, um, to the content of subjectivity, then subjectivity exists that suggests that there are more p-form potentials that couple to sort of non-standard solitons in the sense that it's a solitons with less or even in two transverse reactions. And they are more complicated to define because they don't have to be flat. And I will not discuss these, these solitons in this talk. I will only take consider single brains and I will soon, I will first try to see that I can make a case of them as a new problem. If that works, then it suggests that I can make a brain out of it. And, well, if you now look to the p uh, form uh, potentials, so the gravity is organizing cells in two-dimensional representations, and you can put them into three-dimensional representations, find the scaling symmetry, then the scaling symmetry determines whether the p domain is three-dimensional is coupled to the soliton, and then there's a nice organization that we don't only have a single and vector of solitons, but if you go to these non stop solitons, they combine into so called anti symmetric tensor representations. And it goes up to a point. Then T L T can be used to impose a self duality condition on the answer tensor representation so that you can split that representation into positive and negative dual part and the positive dual part and this will a slightly different build volume content. The positive dual part is a vector multiplet as a uh, uh, build volume content and the anti dual part as a tensor multiplet like the M5 paper as a build volume content. So that, that nicely extends here. And this does not have to put the mental screen, it's put the mental screen, it's not going to put it so now, but the new future is that it turns out that not for not for all these representations you can make eight different pairs of properties. It turns out that, uh, and you have to then to read it, but you can do the analysis, that you can generally get too many low point potentials if you try to write down the best new coupling, and uh, you really have to figure out how the certain components get the right projections, and the rule is that if you have an ultrasonic tensor representation and you use a light form basis, then which components now are superstructure solitons? Well, you take m plus minus m plus minus p plus minus light form reaction, and all the devices m is not equal to n on the p. So, because if you take a solitron, 4 a and 6, this is an answer to the limits of presentation, then uh, a can be either uh, 1 to 4, or 3 to 4, 2 to 3 to 4, and uh, uh, so, so, and, uh, so, and, uh, and well, there are 4 possibilities times plus minus 8, that gives you 38 superstructure bonds. So, the idea is that, that if you take six dimensions together, there is a two dualities as a five from five. There is a potential that covers the four planes in the length of four to four. If you do the decomposition, two dualities become 56 covers of solitons, and out of this 56 become 32 or supersymmetric. So it's a kind of long calculation, but you get 32 supersymmetric solitons. And for instance, here in six dimensions, I've summarized the situation. Here are all the P4 potentials of superiority. Here is the standard vector of fundamental zero brains and fundamental strain. This is the family of the flat brains. This is the standard single vector of solitons. And here are my new non standard solitons. And these are the numbers which are super symmetric. And get them out of this by doing all this in terms of defining super symmetry. But now something very nice happens because you wonder where do these numbers now come from? Is these all the numbers? Well, it turns out that these numbers can also be produced in a completely different way. Namely, you just apply the same dual wrapping rule, but you allow now also solitons with less equal than two transverse directions. So, this was my previous slide, only had the flat numbers, the singlet and vector, 
But you see here, I think the reactivity is so from down to here because these have too low a number of transverse reactions. But if you just allow the reactive group to produce also these subatoms, you exactly produce these numbers if you try to super get it. So for instance, I had these numbers 1, 8, 24, 13, 16. These are the numbers here, which I have here. So here they follow from a complicated superchemical property. Here they follow from just the result of applying a simple dual reactor rule on a simple professional fiber paper. But there's a problem because you see the, 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 the dual reactor rule for the synthet and the vector could be understood because there was an extra input by the food supply multiple. But I used that, I, I get it. To, to apply, if I want to do a reactor rule for these guys, I need further input. I need more solitons. And I can't use the food supply multiple. And in, so the effect is there, it's all the second solitons so come from. And the suggestion is now that you see in some sense the supply on both we call standard in the sense that the number of transverse reactions is three. And in some sense, what it looks like is that uh, you should also be able to find the gases are instinctively also in some sense non standard good supply monopoles whose transverse dimensions are two or less. So you can get all the extra sources, of it, that's just a fact, if you should that there are kind of generalized good supply monopoles in family with six low volume and isomity and four minus and transverse reactions where n is zero, that is the standard number for five plane, because then uh, that's just the result of this reaction. N is one is the standard for the five monopole, which already is used. But if you then extend in an actual way with n is two to four, uh, decreasing the number of transverse reactions and increasing the number of isomity reactions, you exactly get that this dual left will reverse and you can reproduce exactly the non solitons predicted by the uh, subject calculations. So, that's really what I wanted to say in this talk. So, the point is that, uh, well, first of all, I should say, I only consider here some sort of planes, but there are more planes with low transverse reactions and non determined coupling, but also they satisfy certain structures which I cannot uh, discuss in this talk. I should say also, I, I own the corollary compartifications and the monumental design rules, etc. They can nicely extend also to more realistic compartifications. And um, so the suggestion is that there are, that the subjective results suggest that there are, in order to realize these nice design rules, that there are some, uh, some, uh, possibly some other objects uh, in string theory. And well, if this all works, I think it could be interesting because. You see, I really react now with different planes, and I get X, I really look at the two first compartifications, X terms from our super simple. The results of our super deficits have not been uh, so, much, uh, so long time ago established, and you wonder, they include, for instance, domain all sets, typically object with low number of transverse reactions, and you wonder whether they could lead to extra uh, possibilities in, let's say, search for the Sidabaka and the Sinti, etc. So I'm not going to say now it's going, but all I'm saying is that the search for planes and talks for planes is simply is not yet over, and there are, I think, still is more work to be done. And uh, I think I make the channel very happy if I get my seminar. now. So I'll do that. Yes, integrate or commodalize space, etc., to make fine energy solutions. 
Yeah. So that's why these multiple souls move stronger in the sense that as a single object, it will probably not be well defined. I also have to hear something to indicate something to make it a, a fine end solution, and that's why they have their object to be uh, investigated in the literature. And I'm not sure that I can give a meaning to them, or I'm saying that it's very natural that they would be around, and I would have this beautiful thing from a moon virus. And that's why but you build a counter The only difference is that we have set we have set in deep brain, which they both consume inverse copying. And it's a solid box, so they go inverse copy because it's square. That, that's the difference. It's not a deal that way. So they are probably hard to deal with, but you could think about uh, well, something to that. Thank you. Okay, so let's thank you the speaker.